will be better when we uh, uh, talk to the other people, when we include the other people, and we co-create with the others. So this is the second type of knowledge. So if we are planning or if we are trying to, I don't know, to teach a group of students, one of the things we have to have in mind is, okay, there, is, there must be a space in which we teach these people or we work with these people about theory, about, you know, the basic knowledge they need to have. Then, uh, this is the uh, knowing what. And then, there's another dimension which would be the knowing about, knowing how. You know, it's how we can use this uh, theory and put it into practice. The third kind of knowledge that John Schotter refers to is, I think, the most difficult one, the most difficult to, to get or the most difficult to embody, because it's uh, the knowing from within. You know, this knowing from within is about knowing how to respond in a particular situation from a social constructionist point or from a co social constructionist posture. So, for example, if you are teaching in a in a student uh, in a classroom with some student, and you have taught these people about you know all the theory and you know as well about all the methods and the techniques, it would be like the know, uh, knowing uh, how. Then, if, so, if something happens in that uh, space, if someone raises a question, then you have to try to be able to relate to that question from a social constructionist perspective. And this kind of knowledge is the one that Eduardo was saying that is only one that you can get, you know, when you are working with these ideas for a long time. It's not something you can, you know, read somewhere. It's not something, you know, that someone, you know, will give it to you. It's something that you have to practice over and over and over until, you know, you adopt this kind of posture and this kind of uh, seeing of, uh, yes, seeing the world, actually. Okay. Is useful these ideas? Yes. I just want to let you know that finally we could live stream through my smartphone. So we have online Kristen Chorba, who is facilitating this interaction between us and the virtual participants. So we are online right now. Okay. And they probably they are going to ask questions? Or what? Yeah, yeah. So if we have any questions, I will be the one uh, voicing it, and then we can discuss about it. Alvaro and Jaime, siguieron? My name is Yama Traduction. So relating to that, what you just said yes. on John Schotter's three kinds of knowledge, I was thinking that as a professor, I have content or I have something I want my students to know about. Uh, I am struggling with how can I go into organize the process of uh, facilitating their interaction with this about so that's the second level that is the how I'm going to design my classroom to happen what kind of exercises what kind of conversation what kind of questions and I think the third level would be a way of being as a professor in the small talk and I am relating with um, Laura just said about what is the limit of the negotiations uh, because students are there sitting as the students but we are not looking at them as students only they are so many other things and they bring this into the class and this other way of being are also relating to us so for example students come to the class late they miss the tests, they ask for things that we have not agreed, uh, they do unexpected things, and this demands from me not only a response as a professor, my, but as well as a person, that, that's what I am relating to the third level of how I am going to relate, to respond to this student. That's the within, that's the very moment of being able to be responding
as a social construction is relationally, collaboratively, not in a dialogue way, not finishing these people in their small categories. I don't know, just an idea. El, uh, I think this is open up many, many conversations because some of my beliefs is each group is different. And I think it's different if you has a group for one hour, for six months, for one year, how long are you going to be with it? And how often is the relation with it. It's not the same when you have people in a master program for two years, then when you know, okay, I have enough time, that means six months, eight months, one year, to the people reflect on the process through the year. And one of the basic things of, uh, of the social construction is, is the reflection. How do you can ask yourself, see yourself through the time? And I think we have uh, the, the belief that the basic context in which we relate to the other one at time when we are going to meet, where, where is the space, how we distribute the space, and how long it takes the meeting. And the other one is the language games. And I think we start in the social construction to create a new language that became part, as Ken said before and Sheila said before, we create some way of see and way of relate to the other through the time. And uh, for me, the, re the reflection process is so, so important. In order that you can, I don't know, after the second class, the third class, ask the people, what do you think if you arrive late? What is the reaction of the others? How is your influence in the others? What is the meaning the people do to in relation with your uh, delay to arrive to the class? Not pitch it though, you have to be on time. Okay, why don't we create a conversation about what are the consequences? I don't know if the, the COVID word is consequences could be effective better to the other one. In order to create a, a relational conversation all the time, and the way we answer the questions, could we read again the paper? Why don't you speak with your friend and come next week and we think about that again and how the, the understanding of the other people of that idea and don't believe that one answer is the correct but to create different meanings through the time and through the relation between the people and the other thing thinking in your question is uh, try to to create different conversations that means I saw you in the last two days always sitting with Laura. Okay, next time please sit you know, with, uh, with Kathy or sit with, with Celian and speak with other people. If you always speak with one, you are going very, very easy to go, very easy to the answer or to have the same idea. Eduardo, I would yes. like to voice uh, one question from okay. the virtual participant. Uh, since uh, this session is led by uh, Spanish speakers, we have some people online that were expecting to have some summary in Spanish, and they are asking if it would, if it would be possible for you guys, after a conversation, do a, a short summary about what's happening in Spanish. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Murillo preguntaba sobre la manera de enseñar construccionismo social en clase. Y yo, nosotros decíamos que es, hay que tener en cuenta diferentes elementos, diferentes contextos, en los cuales uno sería el tiempo, 
cuánto tiempo se tiene en la clase, no es lo mismo dar una hora de clase que un semestre o que dos años a nivel de maestría. Dos es el espacio, cómo es el espacio, dónde se da la relación, que facilita la conversación. Lo otro sería en la, en la idea de los juegos de lenguaje, que poco a poco vamos construyendo una manera de hablar, de entender, de organizar nuestras relaciones. Y invitar a la gente a que mire, no desde una primera aproximación, sino a través del tiempo, de poderlo releer un artículo, tener una conversación varias veces a lo largo del tiempo, el, o a la semana, o a las dos semanas, releer un libro, con mucha frecuencia decimos que la primera lectura de un libro no dice nada, que es necesaria una segunda lectura para poder generar un, una nueva manera de verlo. Thanks. And one of the things that I have um, done in my classroom is essentially, as a social worker, I treat it all like a group process. I see it all as this relational piece and so my classes all establish group norms and expectations in that first class. Can you speak up a little bit? My classes all, um, we co-construct the, the expectations for the group in the first session. So these sort of pieces about participation and showing up late or whatever that is, cell phones, the group decides the group? What, yeah, what those rules are. Are you in the group? I'm a member of the group, yeah. So, and I treat myself as a member of the group so that I can put out my ideas. I also do that in terms of the activities. So when I'm having folks participate in something, I participate as a member of the group, which is challenging sometimes at the beginning, I think, to break down. I'm trying to break down that power barrier, but then they sometimes are hesitant to share in the same way when I'm part of their group. But after a couple of weeks, I feel like that that goes away. Mm -hmm. So, but that piece I find to be really helpful. So it's not me having to hold someone accountable for the attendance or those sort of logistical pieces. Mm -hmm. yeah, what intrigues me in these negotiations, because I do the same, uh, we call conventional construction of the context. So you ask, uh, what can we make to, for you to feel more comfortable in this classroom during this period that we are going to be together? What do you ask for the others and for me as a professor so uh, you can be comfortable? And what do you offer? Because I, I want them to, to be able to see. I wrote down those things and sometimes what they ask, nobody offers. And then I show them. Um, but what intrigues me is uh, this special classroom, they re request uh, to be able to be ab absent of the class. But they can, or they can be present in different ways, they're not in person. But in the end, I have to put the presence in the system. So the, those kind of circunscriptores, we say in Portuguese, I don't know how the word is in English, because limit is a bad word. You know? Circumstances, restrictions. Yeah. Like also, in, in the, same, the students don't know yet what is best for them, so they yeah. have to to uh, to trust the professor, and then later they'll say, "Oh, you're right." So th those kind of discourses that are um, crossing our practice as a professor. Did you get? Could I have a resume for the Spanish? Yes. En este momento, Katy estaba comentando de cómo ella, como profesora... Kelly. Que, Kelly. Kelly, ah, sorry, sorry, <risa> que, Kelly, como profesora de trabajo social, lo que hace al trabajar con un grupo es que ella co construye con los participantes en el salón de clase cuáles son las reglas sobre las cuales se va a trabajar durante todo el semestre. Y entonces Laura empieza a decir, bueno, cuáles son las implicaciones acerca de poner a que los, sean los estudiantes quienes decidan cuáles son las reglas que se construyen para seguir adelante en, en, un, en un espacio de clase determinado y dónde están como los límites entre la... y acá yo estoy añadiendo un, una parte 
que es cómo, cuáles son esos límites de alguna manera del discurso de la universidad y el discurso del construccionismo social dentro del salón de la clase. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm just adding to what they are saying is there are like two kind of discourses trying to interact. One is the university, you know, the big discourse that is held in the university and all the obligation that it, you know, that the teacher has to have upon, you know, a particular classroom with the grades, with the assistants, with all these kind of uh, things, you know, that's supposed to be, you know, part of the university of this academic, more modernist discourse, mm -hmm. and how can this interact with a more, you know, postmodern mm -hmm. way of working within, mm -hmm. the, uh, mm -hmm. within the classroom? Can I add something? Yes. Um, could you hold oh, a little I'm bit? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, because when I'm listening to both of you, I feel the struggle I have when I start the course, and I see like Kelly, she go a bit more radical, into really co-creating the environment and Laura she stays into like middle way so you still having the power of being the teacher so you believe you know what's best for them so maybe they don't know yet <laughs> right you said maybe you don't know yet but in the end you're gonna thank me because I'm the position that I have the core so I'm in between like I know what they need but then I have to trust that they also know what they need and then when I put when I put myself more in the, into Laura's position, I think it's a bit easier to, to co-create this environment. I have tried to go really into we are co-creating together, so we are both responsible for what's going to happen at the end. Are you uh, are you in with me? And then if they say yes, and then we start. We have the first day the contract. What we're going to be doing here? and we write everything down and we always revisit and some of the thing is if we are co-creating reality uh, you as the audience you are responsible so if you are sometimes they say oh it's so boring this topic so I'm disconnecting you are responsible for co-creating if you are getting bored you should voice it because then we can co-create something else if you don't voice me you are responsible for not voicing so but it's so it's it can be exhausting because uh, at the end of the day I have to have grades I have to deliver uh, assignments so one way I use to help me is to talk about the institution so we have an institution with us and we have to deal with that so I have to report presence and grades, and grades. how shall we cope with that together because there is another voice that we have to report. And then we negotiate. How about if you have the written exam, but also you can give us two times oral, oral presentation. We think we do best. Okay, I can do that. So then I, we have three assignments, the written one, two oral. So we can negotiate that, but they know that at the end of the course, we have to have grades. So, but I, I feel, I sympathize with this both ways, like, if I'm not comfortable with some classes, I might choose to take more lead. If I, for example, in the master courses, I know with international students, that that's their lifetime opportunity. So I know they are full-time committed. So I can play more with them. Bachelor students, sometimes I cannot. So I think it's also being a social constructionist to choose to have a more... Uh, leading position or to choose to let it go in the process. And going back to the different types of knowledge that John Schotter was saying, I think that knowing from within is particularly what you were doing, uh, saying, Seliani. You as a teacher, we able, you know, to read the context, read what is happening in this particular group, and then decide which position you want to take. You know, when you are teaching with a particular group of students. If you trust more the group, then you decide to be much more collaborative and, uh, you know, let more co-construct with the others. If the group is not following you, then you can, you know, adopt more like a leading position in which you say, okay, this is the way we are going to go. And you will finally, at the end, you know, realize that this was the path that we should mm -hmm. take. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> or not. <laughs> or not, yes. So, <laughs> so to be a social constructionist, you know, professor, teacher, consultant, is not, you know, to be always collaborative and to be always in dialogue. It's to be able to read the context and to be able to adapt in the best way you can, you know, in the, to become yourself the most helpful 
to the group with which you are working with. Lo que hay que hacer un resumen en español. Ayúdame. Celian estaba diciendo de cómo es necesario tener ese balance entre las obligaciones que tiene con la universidad. Hay que hacer así, tener la asistencia, hay que hacer unos exámenes y no es de que cualquier cosa vale. Y por el otro lado, entender cuál es la posición, qué, cómo es la evolución en la cual el otro está. Y Carlos Felipe anotaba que esa sería la diferencia del conocimiento de tercer orden que diría John Schotter. Es saber desde adentro cómo leer el contexto para mirar y ver cuál es la mejor respuesta que puede darse en ese momento. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can find there is a book uh, I think the Taos published recently that it's called Getting It, okay. Getting It, and John Shutter writes about these three kind of knowledge there. But he as well he wrote it in many places. It's not uh, the only place, but this is a, I think you can get it up here in the bookstore. I'm not sure. And in the website of the Taos in books and uh, La Revista, ¿cómo se llama? The International, uh, the Harleen Anderson's International Collaborative Practices mm -hmm. Journal. There are some articles that John Schott has Shot. published there. Okay. And there is a place of I have a question and a thought is, the classes I teach are general courses, I'm not teaching advanced students usually. And as I go through this, knowing what, and the content doesn't really relate to me mm. spending, mm. going into a lot of social construction. Mm. I can do some of it maybe because there's a chapter on communication, different things. And then knowing about. Uh, so I'm wondering if uh, other people can help me here. So here's, here's an idea that I want to throw out and just get a reaction is, is we have the technology now to collaborate with Skype or what have you on an international basis. It might be that my students can learn a little bit about social construction by hearing some of your voices. And I could Skype into your classes and you could Skype into my class and maybe just talk about who you are and what you do. And I teach management courses so that anybody can talk about that. Psychology is, is real natural. If, if we could put together amongst faculty members that are associated with the TALS program some sort of list of of, of academics and practitioners that would be willing to ex take some time and exchange uh, who they are and what they do as it relates to each other's courses. Uh, I just throw that out as that might be a way that we can model putting into practice, which is a second item, and not really have in an easier way, just a thought. That makes sense. Yeah. Yes, that makes I'd love to have you Skype into my class. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yes. Even from, it sounds nice. Yeah. Uh, we'd have to figure out some way of. Yeah. I mean, we couldn't do it every day, but if I had four or five people each semester, that, that would be I great. Could, yeah. And I could yeah. share it. So, whoever could take that on as a project would be great help to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would be great because that would be as well a way of how to use these kind of ideas to teach other kind, you know, of, of ideas management. You don't have to use social constructionism to teach social constructionism. You can use social constructionism to teach management, to teach economics, to teach philosophy, to teach any other any other uh, subject. So well, I th just having the dialogue, it would, it would give kind of a multiplicity of voices to a topic, which is what we're doing. And I think that can be a way to collaborate. Right. So even if you're giving a discipline, a course, that you cannot really collaborate because of the content, from here and then you can always have a Skype meeting talking about something that might interact. I, I can translate and then uh, Alvaro has a question. Greg uh, tenía 
una pregunta, comentario, en la cual él decía que él, él es profesor de management y él en sus clases de management no utiliza tanto, digamos, las ideas construccionistas sociales, pero le parece interesante pensar, y esta es una pregunta que lanzó al grupo, de alguna manera cómo poder poner en diálogo a los estudiantes que él tiene con las voces de nosotros que trabajamos desde el construccionismo social. Y él propone que pudiéramos tener conversaciones vía Skype con los estudiantes, de, de alguna manera estudiantes de él de management, con estudiantes de psicología, trabajo social, de diferentes disciplinas, y que pudieran intercambiar con ellos eh, diferentes ideas y de alguna manera construir y empezar a aplicar de esta manera las ideas construccionistas sociales. Ahora, Álvaro. Eh, estaba pensando acerca de la intervención de Greg sobre poner la tecnología al servicio de la difusión de las ideas y del manejo de, del construccionismo social como un enfoque y una mirada y una forma de recoger el conocimiento y quizá con una palabra de esta mañana de Sheila creo que era que sea de reconstruir en una etapa eh, y digamos como que la inquietud que me surge para quienes están haciendo docencia formal que están vinculados a una universidad o que están vinculados a un título es que esto los invita probablemente a todas estas instituciones a repensarse porque es posible que incluso estas instituciones entre comillas tiendan a desaparecer porque se generan redes de conocimiento y de aprendizaje que sobrepasan los límites de las instituciones. No sé si me hago entender. De tal manera que, como que la visión que estoy viendo con base en la intervención de Greg es, o sea que estamos hablando de una institución educativa distinta, como institución, como concepto educativo distinto, es la pregunta mía. Álvaro, I will just now translate into English. <laughs> Alvaro is reflecting upon uh, Greg's uh, comment and he's saying that what would be the implications, you know, to the way the uh, institutions, you know, educational institutions think about themselves when we start to include all these new technologies, you know, all these new connections between the people. Now the people start, you know, to be much more connected. How is the education? Or how can we think in other terms the way the, uh, edu the institutions are created? Does that mean that they need to transform themselves? Which way do they have to go? Should they stay the same? This is what Alvaro was just saying. <coughs> we, we want to, to ask a question. We have many questions, but obviously we are not going to make all the questions and I think one for me is important I don't know for you but it is all of you are teachers and all of you use some these ideas 20% 90% I don't know what are the the most important and representative in experience do you have teaching these ideas to share, if we can share and reflect how, I don't know, I think in some ways if we are coherent, it's different to teach in Brazil than teaching in Bogota, mm -hmm. um, in teaching in your place. Where are you from? Kansas. Kansas. I think it's different because of the kind of student, the kind of teacher, the kind of city, everything. I, I think it's, it's, we have a lot of differences for that reason. Mm -hmm. Nice to have some of your experience too, we can share. Estoy diciendo, Álvaro, que como si somos coherentes, el ser profesor en cada ciudad es distinto, en cada país es distinto. Si alguien quiere compartir alguna experiencia representativa que haya tenido en su proceso de enseñanza. So what's going on right now in my class, and I think it's so exciting for me, um, I teach an undergrad course in the psychology uh, department that is called Escuta y Acolimento, which would translate as something like 
listening and welcoming. So that the purpose of the and welcoming. Uh, the purpose of the, the name is wonderful. It is. <laughs> <laughs> the purpose is it's for the second year students and so they're the beginning of their courses and the purpose is to help the students to create a, a posture an attitude a stance that would be helpful for interpersonal relationships whatever they're going to work as psychologists um, so then i started this course trying to be a different professor so when I was doing what Laura said, that was the construction of the conversational context and asking what were their expectations, what would they bring for this class, how would they like to be there, I also included myself and I said, I want to be here in a different way. So this will be a very successful course if I become a different professor and I need you to help me to do that. Uh, so you have to tell me if I am doing differently or not and there are some interesting ideas coming from these classes one of them that I'd like to share only this one right now uh, is that we decided that at the beginning of each class one student will present a narrative of the last class and they can do this narrative the way they want. So some students are very poetic, they write like a poem about the last class. Some others are like journalists, they like really uh, describe everything. So the only thing I ask is that you have to do a narrative about our last class and we decide which one is going to do next. And your narrative must include what we talk about and how we talk about it. So students are, and I think that's an exercise of re reflexivity. Students are looking on how they are doing their classes. Mm -hmm. And they are getting really engaged in this, mm -hmm. so that's nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how many students do you have? I have uh, about 30. 30? 30, 30 yes. How long is their average narrative? Or how, how much of the class oh, it is do a you page. spend? Oh, I mean, how much time do you they spend do, on They this? do it at home. Right. So we decide, so you're going to do next, right. so next class you come and you start the class reading your narrative. That takes only five minutes. Oh. So it doesn't go on for half an hour. No. <laughs> would you let it go on for a I longer would. Period? Sometimes they want to comment on the narrative, okay. they want to include something. I always ask, do you want to include something? What is something that you would like to say about this? Sometimes they are just like, nice, it was just nice to remember what we did the last week and then we go on. Mm -hmm. But I imagine that at the end of the course we'll have a set of stories on how we did and how we progress in, in our way. And, and, that's mm -hmm. and I think it's well. also um, I think it's also one way of uh, assessing how the learning experience is, is happening. Because sometimes you are sure the class went really well. And the next day, mm -hmm. somebody comes to you and says something else. So mm -hmm. Something happened here. So you have the chance to, re, uh, to reflect and rediscuss what was given before and on time. Because when you just have a final written exam, all of a sudden they discover they didn't learn what you expect them to. So if you check on the process, you still have time to recreate the topic. Murillo cuenta el. El nombre, el, de, el nombre de la clase tuya es... Escuta y acolimiento. Escuta y dando la bienvenida. Acolimiento. Acogimiento. Sí. Escuchando y acogiendo. Acogiendo. Alumnos de segundo semestre de psicología. Y el interés de Murillo es cómo logro yo ser un buen profesor. Y le pide a los alumnos que le ayuden y que le estén informando permanentemente cómo soy un buen profesor y cómo hacemos que esta sea una buena clase. Y una cosa que decidió es pedirles que los primeros cinco minutos de cada clase alguien hace una pequeña narración de la clase anterior y de lo que aprendió en la clase anterior. Algunos son muy creativos, muy poéticos, otros hacen una cosa mucho más de tipo periodista y ha sido una, muy experien una experiencia muy enriquecedora. 
Y Celian comenta cómo esta es una muy, muy buena manera de hacer un seguimiento y que no sea solamente al final de la clase, al final del semestre, cuando se pueda decir qué pasó, sino estarlo viendo permanentemente. Ok, creo que tristemente apenas nos embalamos, se acaba el tiempo. Very sadness the time is gone. When we start to speak, then the time will stop. <laughs> so let me just ask if there is somebody from the virtual group that wants to voice something, ask some questions. Uh, Kristen, if you want to say something or ask a question to the group, now is the time. And also, I think it's important to say that we have a discussion space here that we can always keep the conversation on. So if any of you have some uh, later insights and want to, and we can keep connected. I like the idea of doing some Skype Wonderful. sessions together. I love the name of the class, Listening and Welcoming. <laughs> and what it reminds me of is, is uh, a law school professor, friend in Boston, uh, wanted to teach a course in uh, preventive law or alternative practices in the law, um, and she couldn't get it past the, you know, the, the uh, course committee or whatever. And uh, once she called in clinic, they said fine. So she does whatever she wants in clinic, and she's got students, you know, waiting in line to get into her class because she's talking about all these new ideas in the law. But the law school said, oh, no, no. We don't like the sound of that. So, I mean, I think about a class like listening, listening and welcoming. I mean, can you imagine that? So, what a wonderful idea. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank yeah, you. thank you. Thank you. Something else I wonder about. I know we have to break, but um, the the issues or uh, problems that arise uh, translating the social construction ideas back and forth from one language to another, and how you know if you find issues associated with that kind of translation, like are there different concerns about social construction in the culture of Colombia, wherever, Brazil, compared to the U.S.? Am I making any sense? Just, uh, I just wonder about the, the language and you know, are there issues with translation of concepts or anything like that? Yes. Okay. I would say yes. There are some issues in the translation, mostly because in uh, in English you can play much more with the language. You can invent a lot of words, and you can make you know this when you add ing to lots of verbs. Miss, and, and like we miss when we yes. add in this. Oh, and it's, it's yes. Yeah, so ing it, it, it becomes like movement, you know, and mm -hmm. like you are doing something in the moment, mm -hmm. which is actually very difficult to translate into Spanish, for example. So there is a lot of, you know, small details that many people play with, you know, writing the articles or when they present. And when you try to translate them, you kind of become all this uh, movement that you that people, you know, can say it in English. It becomes much more static when you translate it into Spanish. And this is quite difficult. I love that when I hear people translating, like this hesitation, either way, for English, like, I don't know how to say that in English or something like that. Yeah, that's why I wonder. Yeah, I love that. Must be welcoming. Wow, that's fabulous. I have my.